Uh, IEEE membership overall, this is where we stood at the end of uh, August. Uh, total membership was 358,000 members, which was a 5.7% decrease uh, of, of, as to where we were in 2019. A higher grade membership without including uh, graduate students, uh, about 280,000 members. Uh, that was a decrease of 2.6%. Where we're seeing the uh, largest decrease in membership is because we have some universities, of course, that are not open worldwide, uh, and some of which are just now resuming, uh, whether it be in person or virtual um, universities. But our undergraduate uh, student membership is currently about 45,000 members, and that represents a 20% decrease uh, from where we were last year. Hi, David. Uh, Yes. Yeah, sorry, it's over here. It seems to be your slides are not advancing. Oh, you're not seeing them? Or they're not advancing. Okay, I'm advancing them myself. I, um, I, can, I can see it. Okay, just keep going. Okay, maybe there's a, a lag, uh, and yeah, I apologize. Maybe. Okay, I'll go a little slower. And then for our, uh, graduate student memberships, we have uh, members, excuse me, we have about 34,000 members, and that's an 8.1% uh, decrease. Um, as we look at overall IEEE membership, just showing it from a graphical representation, you can see in February uh, we were pretty close to be on target, and then obviously everybody knows what happened in March uh, with the uh, pandemic, um, and you can see uh, where we are uh, year over year. But we're putting significant resources in place uh, to follow up and try to stem the tide of our decreasing uh, membership. I can tell you overall from a society membership, uh, it's relatively flat. We're at about 1% uh, down uh, where we were this time last year. Next slide, still advancing, Alvin? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so just to show our membership uh, distribution. So total membership, uh, if you look in blue, regions one through six, those are the regions residing within uh, the United States. Uh, region R10 is uh, Asia Pacific. Uh, region 8 is Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Uh, region 7 is Canada. And Region 9 is uh, Latin America. So just wanted to show you the distribution of our members. And you can see for our higher grade members, uh, roughly 50% of that is still within uh, the United States. From a graduate student membership, it's about 25% in the United States. Um, and 42% uh, in Asia Pacific and about a quarter of our total members in Europe, Middle East, and Africa. From a student standpoint, which is roughly 18% of our total membership, uh, over half of them are in Europe, Middle East, and Africa, about 20% in the United States, and then uh, Region 10 represents about 16%. Uh, the largest regions within the world, number one is Region 10, and then number two is uh, Region 8. So some of the priorities at the IEEE level, um, it's, it's to uh, engage globally but empower locally. Uh, and we're focusing on leveraging technology to collaborate, communicate, and connect worldwide. We're really focusing on attracting new members. Our past IEEE president from uh, last year, uh, Jose Mora, wanted to increase membership 10 times to where we get to over 4 million members. But we want to focus on industry practitioners, uh, YPs, women in engineering, entrepreneurs, students, etc., and encourage all members to join a technical society or council. Uh, the main priority from our IEEE president this year, uh, uh, Professor uh, Fukuda, uh, is to develop a lifelong education learning uh, platform for our members where we partner with them and develop IEEE as a trusted partner for our members in their journey of lifelong learning. Uh, elevate the importance of continuous education programs. I'm sure most of you on here have heard about our new I ILN platform through uh, educational activities. But for IEEE to play a part uh, in one of our major operating units are working to uh, do that which is under uh, educational activities. Uh, some of the main uh, priorities from MGA is to strengthen sections through cross-chapter collaboration, uh, to promote section vitality, 
Uh, also have the chapter coordinator position uh, for the sections in the CLE for training and onboarding. Also to have self-assessments of our chapters and have this conducted similarly to have how we have this done annually uh, for our sections. We also have an MGA and technical activities ad hoc group on, uh, on local groups. Uh, and you'll hear more information about this if this gets approved at the IEEE board meeting uh, next month. But what we're focused there is local engagement of IEEE members and non-members uh, for capturing uh, technical interest and trends by forming a local group. Um, and you know they would be provided some resources that are similar to our current uh, sections, uh, affinity groups and chapters within IEEE. But the means of this is to provide an opportunity to reach out to non-society members, industry professionals, and provide them some resources, but allow them a loose framework uh, for conducting uh, activities at a local, at a local level uh, that we hope uh, would be attractive. Uh, some additional uh, priorities for I, uh, MGA is uh, potential changes to membership dues. Uh, we just got done conducting, and this is available on the MGA website under the report section. Uh, we just got the, we do this every four years. We got the member uh, segmentation survey just got done. And we're looking at different membership uh, dues related pricing. Uh, maybe we offer additional, uh, a different membership models based on uh, member and non-member needs. And we're looking at how that different pricing model may impact revenues and services that are offered. So please look for more information. This will be presented to the board of directors in November. We're also looking at possibly realigning uh, the regions. Uh, we do have, as I said earlier, excuse me, region 10 and region eight are very uh, dispersed geographically and very large from a membership standpoint. And there's some concerns about them meeting members needs. Uh, so we're looking, we've hired a third party consulting company uh, out of Southeast Asia to look at uh, our current regional boundaries that are over 50 years old uh, to see if it makes sense to redo these boundaries with the entire focus for us to better meet and serve uh, the needs of our members and hopefully future non-members. So look for more information on this later this year. And again, we have a, a new ad hoc on uh, membership engagement models and opportunities. And then we also have a joint uh, ad hoc, including our standards association on sustainable development opportunities. Uh, this would be something separate than our humanitarian activities committee does. Uh, IEEE USA, my last slide. Uh, IEEE USA was formed in the 1970s at the request of our US members uh, to concentrate on US member needs and issues. Uh, the, the main functions now of IEEE USA are government relations, career and member services, and communications, awards, and events. Uh, the continued emphasis this year is, is uh, revamping the strategic plan uh, that was just completed this week during our IEEE USA board meeting. Uh, introspective uh, introspection of IEEE USA and value to members. And we've created two ad hoc committees, one an alternative uh, revenue activities really focused on events and conferences, whether they be virtual or in person, maybe middle to late next year after we uh, hopefully can move on from this pandemic and then local government relations. Uh, I would like to thank again the Chicago section for inviting me to present uh, with the, at the 126th annual uh, event and career and expo show. And uh, with that, uh, I will stop uh, sharing. And I hope everybody enjoys today. And please contact me if I can be of any assistance. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. Very nice presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, I suggest if you, if anyone has questions, please put. It